Hello, my name is John Kelly and this is the Weber Auto YouTube channel. Today we are going to learn about the 2011 through 2015 Chevrolet Volt 4ET50 Extended Range Electric Vehicle Transaxle. Now I know that's a mouthful, but this is no ordinary transaxle uh, that you find in a hybrid vehicle. A little over a week ago, I shot a series of videos on the three generations of Ford hybrid electric and plug-in hybrid transaxles for their Escape and Fusion and C-Max and so on. And I told you in that uh, video series that the Chevrolet Volt transaxle was nothing like that transaxle. The, the Ford transaxle is very similar to the Toyota hybrid system and You'll have to watch that video to, to get all that information. But the Chevrolet Volt uh, transaxle is totally different. Uh, it has similar pieces. In other words, it has two electric motors here, a motor B and a motor A uh, down here. Uh, it has a transfer gear and a final drive. But there's a lot more that you don't see underneath all of this. And today we will disassemble this and show you the show you the pieces uh, internally the chevrolet volt uh, uh, 4et which stands for four modes uh, electric uh, transaxle and the 50 is a relative torque rating i've never seen anything from general motors saying what it really stands for but if if you go by what uh, zf uses uh, you put a zero after it and that's how many newton meters of torque uh, it was designed to handle. So this is a 50 series, approximately 500 Newton meters of uh, engine torque is what it's designed to uh, handle. So so the 4 on the 4 ET50 means it has four modes of operation. And the four modes of operation are not to be confused with the four transmission operational states that can occur in some of these four modes. So this is a much more complex transaxle, but it's very powerful. It does a very good job. It has some huge advantages over the other hybrid and plug-in hybrid transaxles uh, that I've seen out there from Ford and Toyota. So the first thing I want to show you is this large electric motor. This is the drive motor, the traction motor. Uh, General Motors call, calls it drive motor generator B. This is the rotor portion of the, the motor. It has permanent magnets uh, in this uh, housing here. And then we've got the uh, stator assembly off to the side here. That is in the transmission case. Uh, housing and that housing of course these are three phase electric motors and so we have two sets of three phase windings uh, coming in that actually connect directly to the stators uh, this is the stator for the smaller electric motor there this the general motors calls generator drive motor a so here's the stator for the small electric motor and I've already shown you the stator for the large uh, electric motor. These cables here, of course, uh, connect to the inverter converter assembly uh, up underneath the hood. And I will do a separate video on the overall electrical operation of the Chevrolet Volt. Um, it does have a separate DC to DC converter in the trunk uh, area of the, of the vehicle. But for all right, let's look at the overall operation of this transmission now. Uh, I explained that the transmission model number is a 4ET50. Well, the 4 means four modes of operation. And so I want to take you through all four modes of operation of this uh, transaxle and the vehicle uh, that it's in. But also in each mode of operation, there are up to four operating states that can occur and so it's a it's a pretty involved uh, unit here so to understand how this transaxle works and through its four modes of operation you need to understand that 
There are three clutch packs in here and one planetary gear set. Now the Ford uh, hybrid system and the Toyota hybrid system, uh, they use at least one planetary gear set. Uh, the Toyota ones uh, use two in some of their models, uh, just one in their latest model. But the three pieces of the planetary gear set are connected to different pieces in this uh, transaxle, but through clutch packs for the most part. There's one exception to that, and that is the drive motor generator here. So a planetary gear set has three main pieces. It has a sun gear. Well, the sun gear is directly splined to drive motor generator B. So whenever this electric motor rotates, we're turning a sun gear of a planetary gear set. Now, in order to make this vehicle move, this gear right here, the transfer drive gear, the transfer gear, the, the pinion and the ring, they all have to rotate. Well, this transfer drive gear is connected to the planet carrier. So that's the second piece of a planetary gear set, the planet carrier with the planet uh, gears. Uh, the third piece is the ring gear. Now we can't see the ring gear in here, but there is a clutch pack called the variable low one two reverse clutch pack, and it's actually a brake. For some reason, General Motors doesn't call their clutch packs brakes when they actually stop something. The rest of the planet does, but GM always does things <laughs> their own way. So when you go to take an ASC exam and you see something called a brake and you've only worked on General Motors, uh, that's a clutch pack that stops something. So anyway, we've got a, a clutch pack or a brake that stops the ring gear from rotating. Uh, that's the variable low one to reverse clutch. We have a sun gear that's connected to this drive motor generator B and then the planet carrier that connects to our drive gear. So when that clutch pack is applied, the, the variable low variable low one two reverse then power is transferred through from the drive motor generator B to the wheels and propels us down the road. Um, it's hydraulically applied of course this transaxle has a full valve body uh, shift solenoids in it and so on. There's a couple of uh, air check passages over here it's really noisy because I can't seal all of the passages totally, but let's listen and see if we can hear a clunk. Whoop. So that clunk, that is the variable low one to reverse brake or clutch pack coming on and stopping the ring gear from rotating. And then at that point, when we drive the motor and we want to move the vehicle forward, so we've got to turn it this way, uh, it will propel the vehicle forward. It's turning it now just because there's a little bit of drag on the clutches from laying in a position that's not natural for the transaxle. Normally it would be on its side, have plenty of clutch pack clearance and, and so on. All right, so that is the first mode of four modes of operation is electric vehicle mode. Um, and for the most part, or well, in electric vehicle mode, um, you can you can drive depending on the what year of volt you have um, and the battery uh, pack size, uh, upwards of 50 miles or so, uh, depending on outside temperature and state of charge and driving habits and all kinds of other uh, factors that affect the battery uh, state of charge, but. Anyway, that's electric only. Okay, the second mode of operation is called electric only combined engine off mode. In that mode, instead of using this large drive motor generator B, which can draw a lot of power because it's, it's so large, we can actually disconnect it from our transfer drive gear and instead connect drive motor generator A to it. And that's just to conserve energy. So if we connect a generator drive motor A, with 73 horsepower, 74 horsepower, instead of drive motor B with almost 150 horsepower to the uh, transfer drive gear to make the vehicle go down the, go down the road during light throttle, 
uh, light cruising cruise control uh, then we'll get a better battery life we'll get better cruising range uh, as you drive and so we can switch in electric vehicle mode so in so once again while you're in electric vehicle mode you can be driving off of the large motor all by itself under heavy acceleration or heavy loads but when the loads are gone then we can switch to the smaller motor that is not something that happens on the ford or the toyota uh, systems up until uh, at least the the absolute latest generation uh, i've been uh, hearing rumors that the plug-in prius prime the 2017 plug-in prius prime has this uh, uh, has the ability to use a their small uh, mg1 to help propel the vehicle uh, down the road uh, with the use of a one-way clutch kind of like the first generation ford escape uh, transaxle but i've yet to see inside one of those so i i don't know but uh, the chevrolet volt um, transaxle has the the ability to do that with clutch packs rather than one-way uh, clutches so we've talked about two of the four electric modes first mode is heavy acceleration or just uh, regular driving with drive motor generator b but that draws a lot of power so when we're cruising we can use drive motor generator a which does not dr draw as much power to save battery and extend the the range uh, of the vehicle which this is not called a hybrid vehicle this is called an extended range vehicle so the third mode of operation is called extended range mode and in extended range mode the internal combustion engine has to start because our battery our high voltage battery state of charge is down to such a low level that uh, if we draw it down any lower we won't be able to restart the engine uh, and operate the rest of the vehicle uh, as as you continue to try to drive the vehicle um, so to start the engine we use drive motor generator a we apply the one two reverse uh, clutch pack that's underneath drive motor generator a that will connect to the torque damper or torque uh, torque converter it's not really a torque converter it's a torque damper and crank the engine and, and start it uh, once the engine starts that connection between the engine and drive motor a drive motor generator a um, remains and the engine drives this generator motor as a generator so now the internal combustion engine is physically turning drive motor generator a and it acts as a huge alternator or generator to provide power for drive motor generator b so the power generated by a goes out and comes back in to power generator b now occasionally there'll be some additional power that b didn't need and it will be temporarily stored in the battery but in this mode and i've had a lot of conversations with people about this it does not charge the battery in the sense of it's going to charge it back up to where you can drive in electric vehicle mode it doesn't do that um, but it does it will maintain it, uh, the battery at a certain low level of charge so that you'll be able to start the engine uh, if necessary if you never plugged your uh, vehicle back in to charge the high voltage battery so in extended range mode one more time the internal combustion engine turns drive motor generator a it becomes a generator it provides power for drive motor generator b to propel the vehicle down the road any additional power is stored in the battery which technically i guess is charging the battery but when i say it charges the battery i'm referring to it'll fully charge the battery it does not do that it's just a temporary low state of charge or, or maintaining a low state of charge uh, at that point so drive motor generator b is what propels the vehicle uh, at that point okay so that's the third mode of operation 
the fourth mode of operation is called mountain mode. And in mountain mode, we apply the one three reverse clutch and connect the internal combustion engine through the torque damper to the drive motor A. We also apply the variable high 234 clutch which connects motor A to the ring gear. So we've got a clutch pack to connect the engine to A and then another clutch pack to connect A to the ring gear of the planetary gear set. And then that assists drive motor B in uh, propelling the vehicle. Uh, it also is turning drive motor A where it can act like a generator. Uh, it's not necessarily helping propel the vehicle. It acts as a generator because drive motor B has to have some power from somewhere. And so in mountain mode, the power comes from the fact that we are turning drive motor generator uh, A. All right, let's disassemble the main pieces of this transaxle so you can see the two electric motors, the planetary gear set, and the three uh, clutch packs, as well as the center support, the drive gear, and its big bearing, uh, and all of that. So this drive motor generator B is very heavy. So here it comes. So here's drive motor generator B. I want you to see that it's just big hollow up inside of it. It's not a big solid motor like the Toyota and the Ford uh, hybrid systems have. And so let me sit that over here. Once again, it is full of permanent magnets. So, and so you want to treat this with care. Make sure that you're not going to damage it and, and let it stick to places it, it should not be sticking. All right, so right here underneath or inside of that big planetary um, gear set, we have the two, uh, well, we have one clutch pack, the variable high 234 clutch pack that's on top, and then we have that brake I told you about that's the variable low one two reverse clutch. Uh, to get to those, I'm just going to lift this uh, shell off of here. That'll bring the part of the planetary gear set with me. All right, here's our planet carrier. Uh, it has th 37 teeth on the sun gear and 73 teeth on the ring gear. The number of teeth on the planet gears don't matter at all. This is a five pinion planet carrier, so it's meant to transfer a, a pretty decent amount of torque. Once again, if this carrier rotates, it connects through the shell to the drive gear, transfer drive gear to make the vehicle move. The sun gear here, as I mentioned before, connects directly to our to our drive motor generator B over here. So if this motor generator turns at all, it is going to rotate the sun gear. So I'll leave that sitting over here. Our planet carrier, as I mentioned before, just sits in here on the shell and drives the transfer drive gear. All right, then we have the variable high 234 clutch pack, and that is connected, as you can see, right to the ring gear of the planetary gear set. And 
so we'll set that off to the side here notice it has a hub that slides down into the clutch plates of the variable low one two reverse clutch pack or this is the brake i was telling you about uh, when this brake is is bolted or the housing is bolted right to the uh, center support here so if this clutch pack if the variable low clutch pack applies it's going to stop the ring gear from rotating okay the variable low one to reverse clutch is bolted right to the uh, center support uh, housing uh, i'm going to lift that up As you can see, the transfer drive gear rotates smoothly. Uh, to my knowledge, and from what I can see in the in the service information, if the bearing goes bad for that transfer drive gear, you're replacing the uh, the whole center support section here. Except for this clutch pack housing, it it can be removed separately. It does have some clutch passages over here, hydraulic passages for the variable low one, two reverse and the variable high two, three, four clutch. Before I go any farther, I've got to remove the transfer gear. It has a lubrication pipe and the final drive get it off to the side here and now we can see drive motor or generator drive motor a and notice when it turns it turns this hub shaft and we'll connect all of that together here in just a moment but now let me see if i can lift this off of here here we go So drive motor generator A is hollow inside, just like drive motor generator B was. I'm going to slide this hub shaft out of the center of generator drive motor A, and we will set it away from other things since it is magnetic also and then the last thing that we're left with here is the one three reverse clutch and that connects right to the input shaft that hooks to our torque damper here and then you can see the oil pump oil pump housing here our auxiliary pump the fluid filter and the electrical connection to the auxiliary pump. So now let me let me put this off to the side. Let's bring the torque damper over here and let's let's see if we can make sense of the power flow that we talked about earlier. So the torque damper which is bolted right to the flux plate of the engine is splined right to the housing of the one three reverse clutch so this is the clutch pack that if it's applied will allow engine torque to be transferred into the transmission all right there is a hub let me get that hub out of here when this clutch pack applies, the one three reverse clutch pack applies, it will connect the engine to the one three reverse clutch hub and shaft. So we'll sit that back down in there. These little splines right here are what connected right to motor, drive motor, uh, generator A. So think of these splines right here as the small motor, motor A. So when we 
apply the one three reverse clutch we're connecting the engine right to motor generator a and then through this hub shaft here that goes up and connects to another hub of the variable high two three four clutch right there and that is this clutch pack right here that connects to the ring gear so we can connect the engine to motor a and if we apply the variable high 234 clutch at the same time we can apply or we can connect the engine to the ring gear the ring gear then drives our planet carrier which drives through these teeth the transfer drive gear and makes the vehicle move. Notice we do not connect the internal combustion engine through clutch packs directly to uh, motor drive motor generator B. It's just simply the the sun gear portion of the planetary gear set. So that sun gear connect. This is motor generator. B can come in and connect to the planet carrier that sits right there here would be drive motor generator B driving the vehicle it would turn the sun gear the ring gear would be held solid and the planet carrier would rotate the the shell here the output carrier shell and make the vehicle move or we can come in through the engine and drive the ring gear or we can come in through motor a and drive the ring gear so let me try to summarize this uh, to get us finished up we have one output path for power out of this transaxle and that is through the output carrier through the output carrier shell and turning this transfer drive gear that's connected to the center support it can either be driven by the ring gear through motor a or the internal combustion engine or it can be driven through the sun gear and motor b or both motor a and motor b and in that case motor a would drive the ring gear motor b would drive the sun gear we would have direct drive a direct connection here on our planetary gear set so we could toggle between motor b motor a and still propel the vehicle in the same direction um, the only clutch pack that has to be released to eliminate uh, any trouble in all of that is this brake here the variable low one two reverse clutch which is really a brake um, which is intended to stop the ring gear from rotating so that we have some resistive force when motor b is driving the vehicle down the road okay i told you the chevrolet volt transaxle was nothing like the ford hybrid system and the toyota hybrid system uh, the only thing it has in common is the fact that it has a a single planetary gear set uh, in it but as you can see through the uh, one two three different uh, clutch packs that connect that can connect or disconnect the engine that can connect or disconnect drive motor generator a or connect everything to the planetary gear set and help generator motor b drive the vehicle it's it's a unique uh, system and this is just 2011 through 2015 for 2016 and beyond they have a new version of this uh, transaxle and i hope to get my hands on uh, one of those someday but they've made it lighter weight 
Um, if I remember right from the training I've gone through on it, they have gotten rid of the transfer gear setup and have gone to a drive chain setup, very much like the early uh, Toyota Prius transaxles that had a drive chain, and then they went to a drive gear. Now GM's going from <laughs> a drive gear to a drive chain. Uh, back and forth, back and forth. Anyway, cool stuff, an amazing transaxle. Uh, I hope this has been uh, helpful to you. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.